Hi there. My name's Ian, and uh, if you clicked on this video, you know probably what it's about. Uh, we're going to go over how to build your own house from scratch in this series. And I say for normal people there because uh, this is really geared towards people that don't come from, let's say, a family of builders or come from a place where they have a lot of experience in the construction industry. Um, it's kind of geared towards people like me that are wanting to do this but don't really know how. Um, so first of all, we're not going to talk about how to physically build, not how to swing a hammer or build a wall or anything like that. Uh, that's something that if you want to do, you're going to have to find out information about on your own. Um, really, the goals for this series of videos are going to be how to manage and, if you'd like, participate in the construction of your own house. Um, I'm currently nearing the end of building my first house, so uh, we're going to talk about what you'll need to know at each stage and essentially what I wish I had known uh, at the start, like uh, a list of things that, okay, this would have been really, really great to know a week ago, and then I figured it out, uh, those kinds of things. And the goal, of course, uh, of doing all of this is going to be to save money. If you don't hire a builder or a general contractor, you're going to save money uh, if you're able to do it well. So I hope this guide uh, is able to help you do that. Another piece that uh, I think is involved if, uh, if you're trying to do this yourself is that doing things this way makes you feel a lot more involved in the project. So at the end, it could be something that you're a little bit more proud of or that you feel like you've really gotten something accomplished by, by figuring all this out and doing it yourself. So I think there's a lot to be gained by, uh, by doing it on your own. So let's start with a few assumptions about you, about the person watching this. Um, I'm kind of kind of go through um, what I what I didn't know when I started, and if that's the same uh, on your on your end, then lots of this may be useful to you. So uh, the first is that you're starting from no knowledge of the building process. So like I said, you don't come from a family of builders, uh, you don't know much about construction, about exactly how that works. Uh, the second piece is that you've never managed uh, a large project before. Um, so project management and the skills related to it are very much applicable to what we're going to be talking about. So um, I didn't come from that background. And so if you haven't, hopefully this, this guide is going to help you out quite a bit. The next piece is that you've never bought real estate. So I've rented them old enough that I've never owned any piece of land or anything in my life. So uh, the real estate process was brand new to me. So we're, we're going to go over that in a video. Next is that you'll need to borrow money, which you actually can do. Um, I'm going to be talking about specifically something called a construction mortgage, which we'll go over exactly what that is and all the details in uh, one of the videos later on. But uh, you hopefully, or you maybe don't have all the money to build this yourself like I didn't. So um, using a mortgage is, is a really, really good way to do this uh, if that's not something you're able to afford. The next piece is that you, you live in Canada. Um, this guide may be helpful to people outside, but really a lot of the, the specifics that we're going to talk about, I know that they apply across Canada or are very similar across Canada. I can't be so sure that they're going to be the same uh, in other countries in the States or, or in Europe. Um, the requirements of building and the process of building will differ a lot. So uh, really, I'm assuming that you live in Canada. And uh, if you don't, and this is still helpful, that's, that's great. But uh, that's an assumption that I'm making. And the sixth thing is that you're willing to learn and put in a significant amount of effort. This isn't easy, and if it was, everybody would be doing it, and then builders and, and general contractors wouldn't have a job. Um, but I think it's really rewarding and, uh, and and really good if you can do it, but you do need to have that kind of drive, that will willingness to put in a lot of effort uh, in order to make it happen. So. So let's go over kind of the eight steps and each one of these steps is going to be a separate video on uh, on this channel and I'll, I'll link to everything. Everything will be organized uh, in the description and, and uh, in a playlist. So the, the first video we're going to go over are or the first uh, step that we're going to go over is uh, the main decisions that you need to make. And these are things that you need to basically have decided even before you start the planning or anything else. Um, these are things like what city you're building in. Uh, what your kind of rough budget is, uh, what your role is going to be. So if you're like me, you want to be part of the construction. Um, that's maybe a role if you want to have nothing to do with it physically, but want to run it yourself. That's another role. Um, and another thing is kind of the general design or the general requirements for the house. So how big you want it to be, how many bedrooms you're going to need, that kind of thing. 
the next piece is uh, real estate. So your first real estate transaction, uh, we're going to go over exactly what you need to know uh, in order to be kind of aware of what the, the steps are that you need that you need to go through. Um, and uh, so this would be buying either a lot or an existing house that you want to demolish like what I did. So we'll go over exactly what you need to, to know uh, to get that to happen. The third piece is design. So uh, what are the options as far as designing your house and creating a blueprint that uh, contractors and uh, you know anybody needs to go and actually physically build it? So what can an architect do for you? Um, what do you need to know before going to an architect? What's What does the process look like if that's what you choose to do? Uh, so we'll go over all of that. The fourth, fourth thing is funding. And uh, specifically in this case, we're gonna be talking about a construction mortgage. And I'm not sure if there are any other ways. I did a lot of research on it and I couldn't find any good ways of financing a project like this um, any other way. So uh, this is the way that I use, the way that I'm familiar with, and I think it will work Hopefully it'll work as well as it for you as it has with me. Um, it's been a pretty good process overall, but there were a lot of things that I wish I'd known coming into it. So the fifth thing is permitting. So what exactly do uh, municipalities need to know in order to allow you to build? There's a lot of essentially red tape and, and paperwork that you need to go through. So I'm going to kind of talk about exactly what uh, you can expect to have to have for a city to say, yep, you're allowed to build here, what, that, what that's gonna cost and everything like that. The sixth piece is contracting and scheduling. And this is probably gonna be the biggest and longest video. Um, I know contracting was pretty daunting to me, hiring people to do the work. Um, I didn't know whether they were gonna try to take advantage because they could see that I didn't know, you know, all these things. Um, but uh, kind of what the process is like and how to best go about hiring somebody so you don't get taken advantage of, so you find good people to work with, um, and also how to manage uh, the, the building of a schedule and exactly what needs to happen in what order um, so that you can kind of plan everything out and, and let your contractors know when they need to be there or, or kind of plan things out more formally. And the last two steps are going to be managing the actual build. So the first uh, video, video seven, is going to be on managing the build to lock up. And that's a term that just means the house is framed in, the foundation's in, and essentially you can put a key in and lock the place up. So uh, that's a big milestone in construction is, uh, is lock up. So we're going to talk about uh, kind of all the steps that are involved from uh, you know the first time that anything happens with a lot till, uh, till you can actually put a key in a door. And the last step, number eight, is going to be uh, managing the build all the way till it's ready for you to move in. So this is everything after lockup up until you can quite literally uh, just move your stuff in and, and live there for as long as you want to. So let's go over a little bit uh, about myself quickly, a bit of uh, narcissism time. So uh, my name's Ian. I'm 26 years old and I have uh, less hair than I wish I did. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an IT security professional and I work uh, a somewhat flexible, but I, it's a flexible job, but it's a full-time job and I've been doing that during the whole uh, process of the build so far. So I think it's definitely possible if that's uh, your scenario as well. I am fairly well experienced with renovations. Um, I've, I've kind of come from a family of DIYers. We always did our own renovations if possible. Um, and I actually worked for a renovation contractor in the city for a little while. Um, so I have a bit of experience with that kind of stuff, nothing on the scale of building a house and not much in terms of construction from scratch either. It's mostly been renovations for me. So most of this was, was new to me. Uh, so even if you don't come from a, a kind of construction background, I think, uh, you know, hopefully this, this series of videos is going to be helpful. Uh, my father is actually a project manager by, by trade. So, uh, he's been kind of the second hand for almost everything that I've done so far and that's helped out a ton having that skill set um, so I hope that what I can do is transfer a little bit of that that skill set and some of the techniques that we used through uh, through his advice over to you um, when you're managing this oh sorry I'm gonna go back uh, so the last piece is that I'm not particularly well organized or special I say but what I mean by that is um, if I can do this I think almost anybody else can um, 
with enough drive. I think you do have to be really motivated, but I'm not somebody that people consider super meticulous about everything or, or, you know, really capable of something like this. It was something that a lot of people that I know were really surprised when I told them I was doing this. So, uh, yeah. So like I said, if, if I can do this, I think absolutely you can. If you've got help, a spouse or somebody else, a family member that's, uh, that's able to, to kind of keep you more organizationally grounded, that's great. But uh, I didn't have that. Well, I, I didn't really have that. And I definitely don't have that um, kind of naturally. So, and the note on the side there is um, help. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing, especially with making these videos. So if you are watching this and I don't expect there to be much viewership, this, this series is mainly for me in case I want to redo this. Um, but if you're if you're watching this and you've got some suggestions, you've got some criticism, anything like that, please just type it down. Um, I'll I'll answer you. It's uh, you know I'll do my best to uh, to reply to everything that I get. So some final notes on uh, on the series here. With everything, I'm going to be aiming to be as transparent as possible, and that includes everything from timelines. So how long did stuff take? How long can you expect it to take? Dollar amounts. So quite literally, I'm going to go over the specific dollar amounts that I paid for every part because I think that's something that I was lacking like crazy in terms of information. I really was just guessing most of the time as to what stuff might cost or, or, or should cost me. Uh, so I think to have kind of a guide um, would be really would have been really helpful to me. So hopefully by me sharing that information, it, it helps you out. Um, the next is that uh, I want to give access to all of the schedules and any of the spreadsheets that I've used, uh, any of the planning documentation or anything like that. Um, I'm going to share as well so that you can fill in your own information and maybe use it if you think it would be a useful spreadsheet or a, or a, a form. The other piece is that I understand that I only know what I've learned so far. So I'm not a source of uh, all of the information on this topic. I just know kind of from experience and from going through this. So this is really just a, what, what I've learned. Um, I will definitely make mistakes and what I'm going to try to do is correct them. So if I find out something that, you know, I've, I've listed on a slide is wrong, I'll put an annotation on the screen. If, you know, a whole section that I've done is, is wrong, I might take down the video and re-upload it entirely after making the changes. So um, feedback is very, very much appreciated. Um, I, like I said, I don't expect many people to watch, but um, you know, if there's any topics or questions that you have that are related to things that I'm gonna be talking about in future videos, please let me know and uh, I'll uh, either reply to you or maybe make a separate video on it if it's got enough people that are interested. So anyways, let's, without further ado, let's get on to it. And uh, the first video in the series is going to be on the main decisions that you have to make. So I'll see you in a minute. 